Hey everybody out there, um, I'm going to teach you a fast and easy way to go ahead and program your Beofeng UV5R ham radio. Now what you need is this cable right here. It's got a USB port on one end. Sorry about that, there you go. And it's got the microphone and headphone jack input on the other end. This is going to go ahead and plug in to the side of your radio right here. You can kind of make that out right there. There you go. And the other end is going to plug into your USB port on your computer. So what we're going to do first before we plug anything in is we're going to go to the website and Google search for the Beofeng UV5R programming software. Now I've already done this as you can see right there and I'm going to go ahead and click on the beofingtech.com slash download. You're going to see something looks just like that. And that's going to bring you to their site. Looks very similar to this. There's the address right there. beofingtech.com slash download and it is HTTPS sometimes that does make a difference especially in a secure website now what you're gonna do is scroll through here you're gonna search for the download links for the programming software the chirp programming software which I did find right here click on that it's going to bring you to this site right here and if you scroll through these are actually the firmware releases I'm sorry let's step back one real quick and we'll scroll up to the top here there you go okay so you want to download this alright once that's downloaded you're gonna go ahead and open it up and run that installation the next thing is Typically your cables will come with the firmware that you need in order to run it. Mine came with the disc already as a package that I bought on eBay. There we go. Okay. Now, you're going to unzip, it's actually a uh, WinWar, uh, to un unzip it, unpackage the contents. It does have some Chinese, don't be scared about that. All you're going to do is just copy that folder. Typically what I do is I just go ahead and copy it straight to the desktop. So I'll just go ahead and drag it right out to the desktop copy to desktop it's about three megs maybe a little bit more and I'm gonna go ahead and open it and look at that you're gonna see all of this stuff the only thing you're looking for is the PL2303 USB drivers you might be able to uh, Google search that and download the drivers from there I recommend that it's a lot easier to work with now if you see this right here, go ahead and just extract this, and I typically just say extract here, I don't really care because it's in that same folder, and there you go, there's the drivers, and that's what you want to see right there, it's the PL2303 Prolific Driver Installer version 1.9.0. Now like I said online, you might be able to find a later version, it really doesn't matter, it's just the drivers for this little guy right here okay now you can also use other cables that might fit in there um, as long as it's connected it's got the drivers um, also the COM ports you know uh, those those should show up inside your system manager on the computer now once you've already got that installed what you're gonna do is open up the Beofeng program or the chirp software I should call it what it what it's really called which is the chirp software so I'm just going to click on that and see where it says chirp. Just go ahead and open that up. And you're going to see a blank page. Now, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug this cable in. And I'm also going to go ahead, and if you look right here, it says installing driver software, okay, or device driver software. You'll see this. Normally, it takes about two to five minutes. Since I've already had it installed on this computer once, it should show up pretty quick. But anyways, that's what you want to look out for. Let's go ahead and close this. And we're going to go ahead and plug it into the barrel thing right here on the side if I can do this right one handed I'm using one to hold the phone alright so there we go that's what it looks like right there fully installed and plugged in to the computer now we're gonna go ahead and go to radio download from radio and if you notice it already shows COM6 if you do the drop down you should see probably COM7 COM7 or any other comms but um, be sure it's on the right one that's going to be on that USB you can also find it like I said through a device manager you come here you right click on computer you go to manage device manager and within this area you will see where it says com ports you know com and LPT go ahead and expand that and scroll down just a little bit so we can see more and there it is the USB is actually in com 7 alright so that's good to know that's gonna help us a lot save a lot of time go ahead and click on the drop down choose com 7 you also want to do the drop down and choose your right model of the ham radio and or vendor then model my apologies and hit OK and there it goes now you're gonna see typically you'll see a flashing light I had the radio off so you're gonna get this warning you also probably get that warning for the first time that you try to do it don't worry, just hit OK. Go ahead and turn the radio on. And you want to make sure the volume is all the way up. Okay? If the volume is low, it's going to transfer slower. So we turn it all the way to the top. Make sure it's all the way up. Set that aside. Go back over to the radio. Click on Download from Radio. Make sure it's COM7, Baofeng, UV5R, hit OK. It says cloning right there. And nothing happened, you got that error. Well, I've got it on, so no worries. The first error we got was because it was off. The second error is because it's the first time since it was plugged into that port. Now if you look, this is gonna flash multiple colors and it's saying cloning that's exactly what you want to see right there okay now you're gonna see all of your stations right here that you have preset and installed it's a lot of work to go through and type up every single one of these trust me I got to about 40 something before I figured this out so Let's go ahead and step back here just for a second. We're gonna go back over to radio. You're gonna go over to where it says query data source. And it's a little drop down. And my favorite, repeater book. Click on that. You're also gonna go ahead and do the first drop down, which is the state, such as Tennessee, Utah, Vermont, Virgin Islands, so on and so forth, okay? So select your state, select the county that you're in, okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and find Dallas County because they've got a lot of repeaters. There we go. And you're also going to choose 2 meter and 70 centimeter, but what I do is I'll do the 2 meter first, so I'm going to hit OK, and if you look right here, you're going to see a new tab created. 
there you go see that tab pop it up and look at this there's all of your repeater stations what you want to do in this little area right here where it says memory range I just say 127 because that's the range on this hit refresh that'll make sure that you have all of them in there just in case you don't now one of the ways I get away with getting this to work is make sure you have enough space first off okay say hey look you know what I want to start over so I'm gonna clear up you know 50 of these things over here so just make sure you've got enough space because it won't overlap it'll just pop up with a warning saying hey look you're exceeding you know so I'm gonna go ahead and delete these just as an example and I'm gonna start off at 92 go to repeater book right here let's go ahead and select number 24 and the way I'm selecting them all is I go ahead and I select the first one I scroll up then I go before I click on the number one as I hold the shift key just like this I'm holding shift down then I'm clicking and it's highlighting the whole thing okay now you're gonna right click and just say copy or if you're more advanced control C now come up here go to where it says Beofang UV5R untitled I called it that I mean you can literally change the name of it any name that you want I'm pretty sure you can change that maybe not anyways see where it says 92 I'm gonna go well I'm gonna skip one so I know hey look 93 and above is Dallas County 2 meter and you're just gonna control V or right click and say paste and see that pasted memory one is not compatible with the radio because the mode DV not supported that's fine just hit OK you'll probably get a few more of those okay just hit OK again and if you notice it's starting to populate go ahead and hit OK that's it done alright so it skipped a few because they're not compatible with this radio and there you go look at that look how many that have populated just by doing that easy you're gonna literally do the same thing for all counties and whatever else that, that you want go to query data source go back over to repeater book go ahead and choose 70 centimeter and you know it's the same thing pretty much for all the other radios there you go there's your 70 centimeter look at that there's a ton of those in there and this list goes for days see that there you go so <laughs> 56 uh, it took me a week to sit there and type up you know one by one but doing it this way the fastest easiest way and again you know just copy but since I don't have enough space okay right here I'm not going to be able to put all that there. You see that? You're going to have to have all that. Unless you just want to select a few and copy and paste them over. It puts everything there. Once you're done, now I'm not going to transmit this to the radio, okay? Because I've already got my configurations. But I'm just going to go ahead and pull the data and push it so that you can see that part. So let's go to radio. Skip this part because you know this is already done literally takes a few seconds to go ahead and pull and if I mess up on my speech it's because I bit my tongue earlier and my tongue is swollen so <laughs> you might hear me slur a few things uh, here and there but anyways alright so there we go just pretend that we've already copy and pasted all these in there I've got literally 116 actually 117 if you count zero different repeaters in there 117 that's covering a few counties anyways when you're done you can save it which I highly recommend so click on save or save as go ahead and choose where you want to save it I'm just gonna say UV5R and then you could say Dallas or 
you know, other, other counties, so on and so forth, whatever. You know, if you want it to be more precise, or you can just UV5R list one. Anything you want to call it, it's up to you. Now that you have it saved, you know for a fact you're not going to lose that data because it's saved. Go to radio and upload to radio. Since I've already done this, I'm not going to do it, but it looks exactly the same as it'll show a little thing saying cloning. Make sure your radio is on, volume's all the way up, make sure it's plugged in. If you get that warning, hit OK, try it again. Usually the second try it'll go. But that's it. So plain and simple, this is how you um, load in all of your frequencies without having to do too much work. And once you're done, if you can kind of see the radio here, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and go through these. got a ton of them so you know if you're like me you want to go ahead and have everything in there in case something goes down you got a way to be able to get communication somehow and there's number 116 probably barely see that there you go anyways good luck and if you guys need anything else just go ahead and leave some comments and uh, other than that you guys enjoy Thanks. Have a good day.